Hey, today we're going to talk about the air redesign, air rework, and the plane designer. This is a, a massive update, and I never thought I wanted this, but now it's here. It's like, wow, it should have always worked this way. We have air wings now, and they are fixed 100 air wing sizes. Move all the planes to the center here, and plus G to merge, and there we go. You now see that the air wings now have their individual theaters as well. So I'll say we'll select this air wing and click a create a new air group and now it's got an individual theater i'll admit when i first played around with this to get my head around it was a bit of a struggle so double click now we're selecting only tactical bombers create a new air group like this differentiating between the icons i found is a little bit of a struggle as well but it's once again it's just one of those teething issues differentiating the icons just takes a little bit of muscle memory let's just delete all the air wings to show you how you create one now and this is amazing check this out guys so select an airport boom create a new air wing if you want to, you can filter the planes to have what specific plane type you want. In this case, we'll select the interwar small frames. Creates an air wing of 100 planes. How many planes it requires, how much manpower it requires. Hit OK. There you go. Your air wing has been created just in like three or four clicks. Now, there's even a quick deploy button as well. We go click deploy. We assign which plane specifically. So we'll have one for fighters. We'll have one for tactical bombers. And we'll have one for close air support. You can have your maximum of three because it'll clutter the UI. And now if you select an airport... You go here and one click, you're away from creating an air wing of a medium airframe. Boom, which in this case is a tactical bomber. And there you go. That's how quick you can create air wings. But not only that too, if you were to hold shift or control, you can assign loads. So boom, there you go. All of them. <laughs> one thing that's changed that's a noteworthy thing is when you create a new air wings and you select the planes that you want, in this case, we'll select these uh, naval bombers. These icons have changed. These used to be priority buttons based on where you want your new production of planes to go to what specific air wing. Now they've changed. So the lower chevrons, this is reserve only. So this air wing will only use outdated planes. If they find yourself with new planes, for instance, for let's say a new air wing gets the newest plane, therefore it ends up with one old one because it's already at maximum 100 size. That out of date plane will be back in the pool and in this case will be reserved for this air wing. Then you've got regular, either updated or outdated, just the middle one. Then you've got elite only, which basically means only reinforce with this specific kind of plane. So the most up to date model of this specific kind. And then finally, specialized air wings. It's kind of a strange middle ground, which I can't understand where you would use this for. But the specialized air wing means you only reinforce with planes that are already specifically in this air wing. So only these specific variants. So if you guys are aware, Spitfires, for instance, had like 20 different variants throughout the war. If you were specifically select only one kind of variant, maybe one with cannons, for instance, it would only reinforce that kind that is in specifically in that air wing. And let's not forget about the filters too. Oh, the filters are so good. Remember when you had thousands of outdated planes that you never liked, so you end up destroying them in logistics? Well, now you just can go into here and click rapid fire and make an air wing out of them, of all crappy old planes that you just don't care about. Thank you. Thank you. I needed that button so badly. If you want to do it the old-fashioned way, where you want to prioritize for certain air wings, you create an air group, which is technically a theater, but the column air group for planes. And as you can see, you've got the prioritize for high reinforcement or low reinforcement. So you could say specifically these planes in this air wing are for interceptors, and they're meant to be obviously intercepting bombers that are trying to hit Germany. So in that case, this could be low priority, but this ones, these ones are on the front line doing the fighting, so these are going to be high priority. When you produce new planes, they will go to this air group first before they're redistributed for the interceptor air group. You can still do what you used to do though. You press D to split and then the reinforcements will go to these air wings. So in this case, I'll delete these ones. And you can see the reinforcements will arrive into these air wings. So you can just still do it the old method if you want to. You don't have to create new ones if you don't want to. This is interesting too. Once again, very situational. I haven't really used it enough to find a way to use this, but if you want to specifically select a certain kind of plane that only reinforces, you can select an icon to reference that. So in this case, we'll select the eagle, meaning only planes that are eagles will reinforce into that specific air wing. So in this case, you can see it's the, is that like a hawk? So in this case, you select an eagle and that will reinforce into the specific one that we've selected. And then the classics, you've got retreat. If you, for instance, they lose 75% of the planes in this air wing, they'll stop being sent up on their normal missions. You could do it to 50% if you wanted to, or in most cases, people just do no retreat anyway. And also you can operate in day and night. The big difference is if you operate at night, you find yourself less likely to get intercepted. But it's a double-edged thing too, because you're less likely to acquire targets. So I feel like it's always a catch-22. You're like, you operate at night, you're not going to get shot down. But however, 
be less likely to acquire your targets. I need to play around with night attack. I feel like it's something you do when you only have a handful of bombers and you try your absolute best to, to hold on to preserve the, the ones you've got. Before we dig deeper into the plane designer, I want to show you something that's really cool as well. You select a plane now, you have this new mystery button. Oh, what is this? You can now compare different planes. So for instance, we can look at outdated planes and select an old fighter, for instance, this one. And now you can see the difference. So this is the modern one we're looking at. And this is the old plane that we've referenced. And you can see it's got less air attack, less air defense, less agility. It has less range, it has less speed, it has less thrust. Overall, basically comparing like for like to see how this current model is better than previous models. The meta will evolve over time and people design more ideal planes based upon mid-maxing them and testing them out, either in multiplayer and single player. So I'm not gonna come here and say to you what the meta is, but I can give some predictions at the end of the video. First of all, I wanna just talk about how planes are categorized. So there are fighters, there are casts, there are tactical bombers, there's strategic bombers, there's spy planes. But the question is how does it know based on the plane that you design, what kind of plane it actually is to get the bonuses depending on doctrines or certain countries specific bonuses so in this case if i were to let's say add a torpedo mounting as the first module for this interwar carrier it all will become a naval bomber so the first slot is what designates what this plane will become however it doesn't have to be ring fenced in being become a naval bomber i can add machine gun to this and now it can become a fighter as well by doing air superiority and interception as well or for instance i could pop a, a bomb lock onto it and now it can do close air support. So this is a carrier-based plane that can do CAS, and it can also do uh, naval strikes and port strikes. And it could be on a carrier, for instance. So now you don't really need to make just a carrier-based naval bomber. You can also make a carrier-based CAS as well. So they're basically, why not do both, right? Same with medium airframes too. Probably the more flexible due to the fact they've got so many slots. And there's just so many different possibilities that can be put onto the front of this cannon. So it can become a heavy fighter. Or for instance, you can put bombs on it. Now it becomes a tactical bomber. So you can put a camera on it. And now this becomes a medium scout plane, which you probably think that's really strange. A scout plane and putting all this production cost into it. No, this is actually smart because now you've got a scout plane with absolutely insane range, 2,200. But why not also put on a torpedo mounting? So now it can do the new mission of naval patrol as well as port strike, as well as naval strike. Why not machine gun? Now it could do air superiority. Why not do mine laying? It can drop mines now as well. <laughs> so this is a multi-purpose aircraft, but as you can see, this gets incredibly expensive. It loses loads of agility and it's incredibly heavy. So you have to put a big engine on it and the big engine as well will increase the cost as well. So it feels to me like multi-purpose air aircraft is not the meta. I think to maximize the three main stats of a plane for fighting, it's going to be speed. So reducing the amount of weight on the aircraft to make sure it has the maximum speed. To increase the maximum air defense without losing extra agility. And of course, agility. I personally think it's going to be something like this. A super light machine gun based fighter uh, with the best possible single engine you can get. So that maximizes the speed, uh, maximizes the agility, and overall keeps the price down so you can mass produce these light and sweet. Now, if you want to, you probably think to yourself, Dave, what you probably want to do is put more machine guns on it so it's got more air attack. You can do that, but the, the speed will come down. As you can see, as I'm adding more machine guns, the speed is reducing and speed is crucial. Well, one's for interception and also for the ability to dogfight effectively. So I personally feel like just keeping the machine guns as light as possible will be the way forward. And there are also some upgrades as well that feel super cost effective as well. For instance, self-sealing fuel tanks is only one production cost, but it increases air defense by four. Yeah, definitely a win there. And also if you are, let's say a nation that doesn't have access to much aluminium, you can go on for non-strategic materials, which reduce the aluminium cost by minus two, but you will lose some air defense, which is quite painful. Is it worth it? Is it not? I don't know. And then what you would do is you would back this up with a super heavy armored tactical bomber. So in this case, you'd put on it, let's say, a medium bomb bay. And at the same time, you will strip this full of armor. Armor plates, armor plates, armor plates, armor plates, and also self-sealing fuel tanks, which increase defense as well. 
So what you basically got here is a not very agile, but a bomber-worthy plane. And of course, you've got to put big engines on it too, because otherwise it won't lift off the ground. And I suppose at the same time, you can increase the amount of bomb bays it's got as well. Could only have two bomb bays. Then at the same time, maybe you could add an anti-tank cannon too. Uh, this is really stacking uh, the ground attack as well, and extra cannons on top of it as well. So overall, if it did a close air support mission, it would do 37 ground attack. Ouch. And the truth is that the defense on this is so incredibly high, this is going to be incredibly difficult to shoot down. However, be aware, the cost of this is astronomical. 84 production cost for this advanced medium. However, this is an extreme example. There probably be a lighter version of this, probably not with the cannons. Probably something that doesn't require lots of research, maybe just including bomb locks, for instance. Maybe not having the final slot. Maybe not having those final slots because this would be more like a basic or an improved medium frame. But overall, it just kind of gives you the idea. This idea of a heavy armored bomber, medium bomber, uh, paired with a super light flexible fighter that has lots of agility i feel like that's the direction we're going to go one thing i will note though that seems to be crucially important is not to use these on naval strike because this air attack only applies to air to air damage and the aa on the ground or in this case the ship uh will just tear through this plane like it's butter it'll be nothing just tear it apart that is my theory particularly for single player will i make a multiplayer video uh no <laughs> no don't forget to like and subscribe. I love you. This is your next video. This is the one you're going to go for. Give this a click. This one. Here.